Hi, my name is Alex and today I want to show you how to easily get triple the ROM achievement in EU4 on the latest patch, which in my case is the very fresh 1.35.2. On the first glance, this achievement may seem illogical. Russia usually is an orthodox Christian country. To become the emperor of the HRE would require you to be either Catholic or Protestant, unless the Peace of Westphalia was signed under certain conditions. And to claim the mandate of heaven, you need to be of an Eastern or Pagan religion. In reality though, this achievement is really not that hard. It just takes a bit of time and patience. I can think about four main strategies to go for this. First, you can start as a Russian miner, form Russia, convert to Catholicism or Protestant religion, become the HRE Emperor, then convert to an Eastern religion and claim the mandate. Two, you can start in the Far East, for example as one of the hordes, claim the mandate, then settle and form Russia, then convert to the religion of the HRE and claim the HRE Emperorship. Three, you can start as the Catholic country in Europe, as part of the HRE already, then form Russia and claim the mandate. And finally, four, you can start as a country that will convert to Protestant, for example Sweden or Brandenburg, fight to become the emperor in the League War and then do the rest. Personally, I believe the most efficient way to go about it is to start within the HRE and go from there. The easiest way would be to start as Austria or Bohemia or Brandenburg. However, I find these countries as very easy and almost boring to play. So I found another nation which is very good for this because it has a unique and a very special ability. And that country is a one province minor in northern Italy, Mantua. Mantua's unique ability comes in its very first idea. It gives us plus one diplomatic reputation and a flat 0.1 imperial authority growth. That is huge. If you get the religious diplomat privilege, which gives you another plus one diplomatic reputation, and if you rush the diplomatic idea group as your priority, while improving relations with at least three or four electors, you are pretty much guaranteed to be elected as the HRE Emperor and breeze through all the reforms, especially if you grab Prague for the monument it has, which provides even more imperial authority growth. The early game as Mantua is going to be very opportunistic. We began by making an alliance with Burgundy and as many electors as would ally us. Our first priority is to stop losing money, so we lower the army maintenance and we mothball our single fort. Because we've been improving relations with electors, now at least two countries support us to become the HRE Emperor. A small branch on our mission tree helps us to become the Emperor. I had to fire a few advisors to eventually get a diplomatic reputation advisor who will help me get elected. And now four electors support me, which all but guarantees my election when the current emperor dies. Aha, my ally Burgundy has called me into a war against Provence, who is allied to Milan. This is excellent because Burgundy is powerful so early in the game and I may be able to grab some provinces for myself. My starting ruler makes an excellent general. To have better chances to get any provinces out of this war, we mark all of Milan as our vital interest. <laughs> I'm going to lose the very first battle of this campaign. I have literally nowhere to run, no one has given me military access. Come on man, run, run, run anywhere. Ah, oh, wait a second, hold on, we won it. And with my technology upgraded, I'm feeling much more comfortable now. I feel that I need to attract my Burgundian friends to my neck of the woods by setting one of the Milanese forts as their sieging target. And soon enough, the might of the Burgundian army is surrounding me, helping me bring down the Milanese. The rest of this war is really straightforward. And when Burgundy signs the peace deal, they give us one province. Excellent. Now that we have doubled in size, the game can really begin. I've already fabricated a claim on one of the provinces of my neighbor Ferrara. I can bring three strong allies into this war, so we attack. Ferrara is allied to Genoa, the Papal States, and Florence. So I kind of expect them to destroy my army early on in this war. And that's exactly what happens. My soldiers have to run with their tails between their legs. Yep, my armies are locked without any escape routes. So after a few battles, I have no more army. That's okay though, we have a few strong allies, so there is still hope. Because we are going for a classic HRE game, the logical choice for the first idea group is diplomatic. After my allies occupy the area of Provence, I can peace out the Papal States. 
I've hired a mercenary stack to help me lead some sieges. And when Genoa falls, we piss them out for some money and prestige. And same for Florence. Which leaves us able to fully annex Ferrara. This also gives us Renaissance. As always, we concentrate and core. I've been waiting for the Shadow Kingdom event, so that my Italian neighbors can leave the Empire. Myself, I'm going to stay in the Empire, even though I'm not allied to Austria, who is the current Emperor. This will give me a bunch of debuffs, but if I leave the Empire, I will have no chances of being elected. We need to keep growing to expand our economic base and our army. So our next target will be Venice, who has a lot of rich lands right next to us. As always, we declare which provinces are our strategic interest, we call in our allies and we attack. The reason I've chosen to attack Venice right now is because I've noticed that they are occupied in a difficult war against the Ottomans. So most of the armies are somewhere down south. Here we go, the Emperor lost control of Italy. As I've mentioned, I'm going to stay in the Empire, even though I'm going to lose a lot of prestige. Because of this choice, the electors are still voting for us, and I'm hoping that the negative effects will not last too long. I'd love to get Venice as part of my peace deal, but this will bring a lot of countries into the coalition against me. So it's best to be a little bit more humble in our demands. Now that we are so much larger, we can finally ally Austria, who is the current Emperor, and this immediately removes all the negatives of staying in the Empire. Although I don't want to conquer too much land in Europe, I don't need to be strong enough for two reasons. First, I need the electors to keep voting for me, and it helps to be a big nation within the Empire. Second, I want to be at least as strong as Burgundy, so that when I eventually get them as my junior partner, their liberty desire is not too high. And unfortunately for them, Milan is a very convenient punching bag right next to me. I'm taking full aggressive expansion with each peace deal, so in these wars I can literally take only one or two provinces. Otherwise, an early coalition will simply kill my campaign. And in 1472, the first objective of this game is complete. We get elected the Holy Roman Emperor. As Mantua, with diplomatic ideas, keeping this emperorship is super easy. The patch I'm currently playing on, 1.35.2 or something, has a very unfortunate bug, where I cannot expand my empire through war. The Casus Belli to expand my empire is simply disabled. So the only way I can pass reforms is by accumulating as much imperial authority as I can. After being elected, we have automatically become an empire, which means no issues with governing capacity anymore. We also have a massive force limit, so that we can field large armies. That is as long as we can afford them, so we need money. And for that, our next war target is Genoa. I also want access to Savoy, which will later connect me to Burgundy. Because we have a royal marriage with Burgundy, and an alliance, and we are now also the emperor of the HRE, we are almost 100% guaranteed to get the Burgundian inheritance, unless something like a negative miracle happens. In the Imperial Incident, we vote to keep the Union, of course. This may bring France into war against us, which would be great. But, from my experience, because we have a very strong alliance network now, France will likely not attack. We will be attacking Savoie directly very soon. So get them out of this war, all we want is cancel a few of the alliances and get some of their money. Same for Florence, who keeps engaging itself into all my wars on the wrong side. As for Genoa, we take their two provinces on the continent and all their money. Usually this event, last champion of the Just, can give you a good general, so why not? Yep, I guess he's not too awful. Because most of the countries inside the HRE are of Germanic culture, and we are obviously not being Italians, it takes us more than the minimum 50 imperial authority to pass a single reform. With time, this requirement will only grow higher. Et voilà, we can kiss that horse. Because I have stayed at peace intentionally for a few years, we got this event which integrates Burgundy for free. If you want to keep Burgundy around as a subject for whatever reason, just stay at war for at least 40 years after getting them. We have enough governing capacity to full state all these new lands. 
We have now grown big enough to play in the league of the big boys. The Pope tends to excommunicate Savoie in almost every game, which is exactly what is happening here, which means we can get all this very rich land for half of the aggressive expansion. In this game, I am well above my diplomatic relations limit. And now you can see why. Each war I'm fighting is very easy for me to win. Also, because I have so many strong nations on my side, and because I'm never fighting anyone in the Germanic culture group, the coalition is never strong enough to threaten me. Still, I don't want to become too brazen too soon, so it's worth waiting for a few years before taking the entirety of Savoie. And now, a few years later, this risk is acceptable to me. So, I'm going to annex the entire country. If I were not going for triple the Rome achievement as the main objective of this campaign, I would now be developing like crazy my newly acquired Piedmontese culture provinces. And I would be converting to Piedmontese culture a whole bunch of provinces nearby. Then I would form Sardinia Piedmont and later Prussia, so I can get plus 10% administrative efficiency from the emissions. But this time we are not going for a world conquest, so we will just form Russia directly. You can see that a large coalition has formed against me. It's not enough to automatically improve relations with outraged countries. So I will now be manually improving relations with each country, hoping to get them to above 50 relations to get them out of the coalition. I don't know if it's to do with the latest patch or with my particular set of ideas and government reforms, but I'm getting this very unpleasant event a lot in this game. On the other side, you can also get this very nice event, Radical reforms. You can get it if you have trade efficiency and inflation reduction advisors at the same time. So simplify these advisors, enjoy the free mana from the event and hire them back. In my game, Burgundy had somehow managed to lose Holland as their junior partner before becoming my subject. I know that conquering Holland back will give me a lot of aggressive expansion with the Germanic nations nearby, but I really want to own these rich lands to have a good trade share in the English Channel trade node. A critical part of my strategy for the next few years, so I can eventually pass all the centralization HRE reforms as soon as possible, is to handle the Protestant Reformation, which is about to fire off in a few years. Before that, I literally have nothing to do, apart from conquering a few nations here and there. If I take too much too fast, the aggressive expansion will literally kill me. So, just two provinces will have to suffice for now. And finally, I feel strong enough to attack France. In this campaign I don't want to kill them off completely, but I do want to take some rich lands around Paris. So I've released a vassal, Champagne, who has some cores on France, and I go for a quick war of conquest. France is notoriously strong, and although my allies and I have double the amount of troops, they're managing to kick our ass all over the map. Eventually, after a lot of maneuvering and taking France's weakest allies out of the war first, we're able to rake up enough war score to piss them out for what we want. Brittany is out. The Swiss are out. And France surrenders. I move my capital to Den Haag to avoid the future Dutch revolts. And in 1512, a little bit behind schedule, the Protestant Reformation fires up. Death Martian goes Protestant, which is both a curse and a blessing, in a way. It's a blessing because they are one province minor, and I can easily force religion on them in my war, converting them back to Catholic and killing the Reformation Center. And it's a curse because we don't share a border, and I will need to attack them without the Kaza's belly, thus losing stability. This is why I've rushed diplomatic ideas early on, so I lose only one stability level and not two. Because they're the only protestant nation right now, I'm not too concerned about aggressive expansion. Soon enough, two more protestant reformation centers show up. Luckily for me, both of them are in the Nordics, a little away from my empire, and although now I will need to fight Sweden and Denmark, the location of these reformation centers will give me some time to prepare. Although this is the worst possible declaration of war to be taken any territory at all, I am feeling strong enough to vassalize a small nation up here in the north, Lauenburg, so I can have a base of operation for my attack on Denmark. In case you didn't know, when the first center of reformation appears, the province where it shows up gets a religious zeal modifier, which gives minus 100 power to conversion. 
the other two deformation centers get only minus 5 modifier, so it's possible to convert them manually. However, the only way to convert this first center of reformation is to force religion on its owner. With the first religious center successfully handled, we declare on Denmark. In this war declaration, I made a rookie mistake. Don't do it. Instead of conquering a core of my vassal Lauenberg, I've declared the war of an imperial ban, which only allows me to take a single province that already belongs to the Holy Roman Empire. I was stupid, I misclick, I will need to fight Denmark again, and meanwhile, the center of reformation will start converting provinces. My new vassal does have a core on Lübeck, which is a great trade center province. So fighting Lübeck becomes my next war of conquest. By co-belligering Riga, I am able to bring Sweden into this war, who is my real target. I have two reasons to fight Sweden. First, I want to destroy the center of Protestant reformation which they have. And second, I want to conquer a few provinces in Finland. This will bring my border right next to Novgorod, which is already part of Russia. Vassalizing Novgorod will allow me to consolidate the Russian lands for very little cost. After taking Sweden out, we annex Lübeck. We are not going to conquer anything in the Holy Roman Empire for the next few years at least. Most of our upcoming wars will be religious in nature. So I feel that the aggressive expansion from this will not hurt me too much. By the end of this war, our peace with Denmark is up. So we declare our second war on them being very careful to select the right Kaiser's belly this time. We have been fighting almost non-stop for 80 years, so our very high army tradition is starting to produce excellent generals. After besieging the Danish capital, we demand the province we want, connecting it to our land, a little bit of money, and we peace out. After converting all of Nordics, these two northern reformation centers are starting to convert lands inside my empire. And that's exactly when a reformed center decides to spawn in Frankfurt. The bad news is that they are right in the middle of the HRE this time. The good news is that they are a one province miner again, and they are lied to someone whom I border, so I can fabricate claims on that nation and bring Frankfurt into this war. Meanwhile, our cores in the Nordics are done, so we can max out our religious conversion power and start converting those annoying reformation centers. After I full core them and take the religious power edict, it will still take up to 50 months, which is a lot. Meanwhile, another reformation center spawns in Switzerland. This one we will need to conquer and convert manually as well. My claim on Berg is done. And this allows me to attack them and bring Frankfurt into war, which allows me to remove that annoying first level reformation center. At long last, the center of reformation in Denmark is gone, but the remaining center in Sweden immediately starts converting this province. I don't think it will have enough time before disappearing though. After Frankfurt falls, we force religion on them, and we eliminate the second most dangerous center of reformation right in the middle of HRE. The provinces it was converting are now safe. And there we go. The three true blue protestant centers of reformation, which could have wreaked havoc on my empire, are now well and gone forever from my game. While doing all of that, I have fabricated a claim on Canton Vo in Switzerland, so I can now declare my next religious war. The third reformed center usually spawns in Geneva via an event, which is why I made sure to conquer Geneva before so I can prevent the center from appearing in my lands. The first priority in this war is of course to peace out France, because they are the strongest of the bunch. After this, taking what we need from Switzerland is easy. After all this religious violence, most of my electors still love me, but I cannot say the same about most of the HRE. I now need to pass probably the most difficult reform, the reform of the Hofgericht, that will set me on the centralization course within the Holy Roman Empire. All of the countries in the HRE currently oppose this reform. Here we go, John Calvin event in Geneva. Choosing the second option gives a bunch of negatives, but importantly, it prevents the formation of the third reformed center here in Geneva. So that's exactly what we are going to choose. To pass that first reform in the centralized HRE branch, I will need to become a good boy with the fellow Holy Roman Empire members, so that my aggressive expansion goes down with them. I will also need to improve relations with each single one and possibly wait for my imperial authority to go all the way up to 100. So now is an excellent time to attack and vassalize Novgorod. 
Meanwhile, we continue the long and excessively involved journey to gain support for our next Holy Roman Empire reform. This would be faster if we were of Germanic culture, but eventually, at 70 imperial authority, we can finally pass this reform. 100 years after starting the game, we are doing well, if I may say so myself. We are well on our way to get this achievement. Sweden is blocking our way east because we have completed the religious ideas and their heretics and we border them, we have an excellent CB to get the lands we want. Easy war. We can even get Riga as part of the deal. No one seems to care even if I take a lot of land from them. We can even get some money. And now Sweden will no longer be dangerous for the rest of the game. Muscovy is the next logical target. They have been having horrible time being bullied by the Commonwealth and being confined to this little corner of the Siberian woods. One of the easiest wars so far, done. Unfortunately for me, the Commonwealth, who is our ally, has grown massive. You would also know that they have excellent military ideas, much better than mine. Fighting them will be super difficult. I simply don't feel ready for it, even though I need their lands to form Russia. So before attacking them, I will wait until I revoke privilegia in my Holy Roman Empire reforms. With the amount of imperial authority I'm now generating, 0.7 per month, this should only take a couple of years. In case you didn't know, everyone who supports this reform within the HRE will become my vassal. So I will have the so-called vassal swarm of powerful European countries, and this swarm will help me a lot to conquer all the way to China. Even though I can revoke privilegia already, I don't want to do it just yet because the largest countries in the HRE are not supporting this reform. So I need a few more years to get as many countries on board as I can. They will all become my vassals anyway, so I don't care if I go well above my diplomatic relationships limit right now. All I'm doing now is allying, role marrying, improving relations with, guaranteeing independence, giving gift, influencing and bestowing imperial grace on as many countries as I can, literally everyone within the HRE. Yet still, this is not enough to bring the biggest countries in. Austria, Switzerland, Berg, Bohemia, they don't want to support this reform despite my best efforts. If I were going for a world conquest, I would have accumulated more imperial authority to get even more countries to become my boss. But because my objectives for this game are limited, I simply don't have enough patience for that. So there we go. All of the countries who did not become my vassal will now have to face my wrath. And those who did join me in this reform will need to transfer their trade power to me so I can become rich and powerful. This begins the third stage of our campaign, becoming Russia. Commonwealth stands in the way. I had already broke my alliance with them. They are fellow Catholics, so I don't have the Deus Vult Casus Belli against them. And I will need to use the claims of Novgorod for this attack. Another strategy of dealing with Commonwealth is to support your heir for their throne. At some point they will become a monarchy. If your heir wins at that stage, you should be able to enforce your personal union on them. That, however, is a very long-term strategy. I don't have the time. Supporting the heir, making them personal union, waiting out the 50 years before you can integrate them, and taking several years or decades to integrate them is just too long for this campaign. From the Commonwealth, I only need the Muscovite cultured provinces. I'm also taking a few provinces from their allies to make my vassals stronger. However, in my first peace deal with the Commonwealth, I'm going to isolate them from the Ottomans. Ottomans are very strong in this patch. If they sense a weakness in the Commonwealth, they will immediately attack. And honestly, I don't want to fight the Ottomans in this campaign. I have already allowed them to grow too big. So for the rest of this game, I want to stay away from them. Bohemia is next on the chopping block. I don't need to fight them, I don't need anything from them. I fought them because I can and because I don't mind having Prague for the monument which accelerates the imperial authority accumulation even more. This way I can also make one of my vassals, Munich in this case, much stronger. I am fighting Austria and later Hungary for two simple reasons. First, I want to connect my lands in Western Europe and in Russia with a direct route on land. And second, I want to isolate Europe from the Ottomans. I don't care if the Ottomans expand into Africa and India but I really don't want them to meddle in my European affairs. After over a hundred years of investing all my papal influence, I finally became the papal controller. Now, this is not necessary for the game, but it sure helps reduce the aggressive expansion. After defeating Hungary, I finally have a direct path on land 
to Russia and eventually to China. I can also take a couple of simple generic missions for money and unrest reduction. Novgorod is turning out to be a very useful vassal for us. They have been making a lot of claims on the Commonwealth. This second war against the Commonwealth is by far easier than the first one. In this peace deal, we take as many forts as we can, because they have a lot of forts. We take some lands up there in the north with the Moscovite culture. Our colors are so similar it's confusing. Not for long though, because soon we are going to go Russia green. This time I'm going to release Riga as a vassal, so I can feed a bunch of provinces to them which I have just conquered and reduce my overextension. They are already part of the Holy Roman Empire, so it will not go against my diplomatic relations limit. It's the year 1610, which means that the age of absolutism has just begun. I've been revoking privileges from my estates for the last few decades, so I can get to the maximum absolutism as fast as I can. I don't really need it for this game, but it doesn't hurt to have it. After annexing Novgorod, I will start carefully converting to Catholicism some provinces in the Russian area. Because eventually I will be going Confucian, or Confusion? I don't know how to call it. I need to maintain my balance of religions overall, and I shouldn't have Catholicism too dominant. But I also want to convert as many provinces as I can to the Moscovite culture, so it's easier for me to become Russia. And I can only do that after converting the provinces to the one and true faith, which is Catholicism right now. I can now pass this Eviga Landfriede reform. This will establish religious peace in my empire. Normally, I wouldn't do it so early. I would wait until my religion becomes dominant inside the HRE, so I can enforce religion on the heretic princes. This time, I will be changing my religion anyway, so religious peace is exactly what I need. I am slowly eliminating all the countries in Europe which did not become my vassal. And now that Novgorod is integrated, and we are well on our way to becoming Russia, it's time for the final push east. My fully filled out religious ideas allow me to declare wars on all bordering heretics. So, Nogai goes first. Then Transoxiana, with its annoying multitude of mountain forts. I am only annexing Sibir because I don't want them in the growing coalition against me, and because I want more non-Catholic lands in my pool. Other than that, I am cutting more or less a straight line east while making the countries I fight weaker for the future. From here on, I'm doing a lot of vassal feeding, because I don't want to deal with this overextension. Soon enough, we cut a straight line through Oirats and other miners here to reach the Pacific. The Empire of Ming has disintegrated into a multitude of Chinese kingdoms. Wu, which is the kingdom in this kind of purplish color, owns the Mandate of Heaven, so they become the main target of my attacks. I need to cut them down in size and also isolate them from their neighbors so that no one can grab their mandate while I'm working on it. After fighting a whole bunch of wars in high attrition deserts and tundra, I have ran out of manpower pretty much. The new professionalism dynamics don't allow me to replenish my manpower as easily as before, so I've decided to simply go ahead and hire a lot of mercenaries. Because I am of Italian culture right now, I was able to take a government reform which allows me to recruit mercenaries without losing my professionalism, and I took the full advantage of it. What I've also discovered is in this patch, Korea is a very tough country to fight. The armies are really strong, and although Korea may look small on the map, its provinces are highly developed, so it's rich enough to afford an army of about 200,000 people. The Kingdom of Wu is very low on the mandate right now, so its armies fold in the battles like wet paper. But Korea, which is a light to them, is really strong. I'm spending most of my time fighting Koreans. I keep vassal feeding as I go east. I'll be able to annex all of these vassals 10 years after making them. I find it more efficient than calling all this wrong culture, wrong religion lands myself while being overextended. In 1641, I finally have enough absolutism, 50, to kick off the court and country disaster. I need to be below 3 stability and at war, so to achieve that I declare a no-CB war on Kazan. I've gradually revoked the privileges given to the estates, leaving only those who give extra mana, so after successfully navigating this disaster I will be able to max out my absolutism. It's also a good time to start my golden age for even more absolutism. Until the court and country disaster activates, I need to stay above one unrest, without breaking my country to rebellions, so I carefully balance my overextension by using the vassals again. Because of this, China now looks like a complete border gore. Most of these countries are my vassals. In 1644, we can finally enable the court and country disaster. 
I will have 10 years of rebellions and reasonably bad events, and after that, my country will be so much stronger. I keep asking my vassals in the east to fabricate claims on their neighbors, so I can continue my expansion. My goal now is very simple to conquer the majority of provinces with Confucianism here in China. Attacking Shun brings Korea back in the picture. Of course, I will need Korean lands also for my objective, eventually. My vassals' war armies come all the way east to the Pacific, but they have been the opposite of helpful. Koreans wipe them out left and right. Ten years later, our state is triumphant in the Cotton Country disaster, so normally we would be well set up for a world conquest from here on. I need to keep Wu out of coalitions, so I'm having to attack them every time my truce with them expires. When I judge that I have converted enough provinces to the Moscovite culture, I do the standard thing for changing my country. Stating enough provinces with the new culture, and unstating a whole lot of provinces with the old culture, so I can flip to Moscovite and form Russia. This requires a lot of administrative power, so I have accumulated a lot of administrative mana to make this happen. When the Moscovite culture is about 50% of our stated development, we can make it our primary culture. And we return our heartland in the Western Europe to full states, so we have enough money and manpower to continue our game. There we go, our second objective is complete. We are the Holy Roman Empire and we are Russia. We get a small dopamine boost by ticking off a whole bunch of Russian missions. Actually, this triple Rome setup can make you very efficient for a potential world conquest. You get a massive co-creation cost reduction. 10% from being the Holy Roman Emperor, 25% from Russian decisions and ideas, and up to 20% more from the Mandate of Heaven. Of course, you also have 25% from the administrative ideas. Altogether, that's up to 80% co-creation cost reduction, which is massive. If you pick up 10 or 15% administrative efficiency on the way by forming different nations, like Sardinia, Piedmont, Prussia, and getting the monument in Alhambra, and if you go revolutionary in the mid-1700s, you will be able to complete the world conquest well before the game end. Here is the mission, which gives us 15% permanent co-creation cost reduction until the end of the game. We also start getting the historical Russian rebellions. Overall, in this latest patch, Russia feels much more alive than Mantua. Mind you, some events and missions are still bugged, like this one for example, which does absolutely nothing apart from giving you a stability hit. Back in the Far East, Daviet owns a lot of provinces with our target religion. So it's only natural that our next war declaration is against Daviet. After a quick fight, we get what we need, and we go on annexing our eastern subjects. Castile wants us to help in their war against Brunei and Japan. This is not very timely, but I really don't care. I need more eastern development, so I want to declare one of the last wars of this campaign against Korea. Got to get this Japanese army out of my way. From Wu, I only need a white piece in this war, so I can declare my last war on them for the Mandate of Heaven in 5 years. Korea, though, is much more involved. They have a lot of top-level forts in the mountains, and they have around 200,000 very strong troops. My HRE swarm has arrived, but they are too afraid to engage in battle. They're literally all just standing away, observing, while I engage with the Korean troops. They only decide to pile in when I destroy most of the Korean army and their manpower. While negotiating peace, we demand as many mountain fort provinces as possible, just in case we decide to continue this campaign. Now we have enough Confucian lands in the east, and the next step is to spawn Confucian rebels. To then successfully change religion, we need to minimize the amount of Catholic lands we have. 
It's very easy to do after revoking the privilege. Just give a whole bunch of your Catholic provinces to your HRE vassals. We had sent a few missionaries to convert Confucian provinces into Catholic. To make sure that nothing gets converted though, we have minimized the maintenance to zero. When we give enough Catholic land away, Confucianism becomes the dominant religion in our country. And we can now simply and easily accept the demands of the Confucian rebels. Now that we are of Eastern religion, we can declare on our old friend Wu with Take the Mandate CB. Easy war. Claim the mandate. And if you want, for the feeling of completion, annex them completely. You don't see it on the screen, but I have just gotten the notification about Triple the Rome achievement. We are the Holy Roman Emperor, we are Russia, and we have the Mandate of Heaven. Yep, here is the achievement in all its glory. I love playing UE4 and I have almost 7000 hours on this game. If you want to see more videos like this with guides and interesting takes on achievements, then please subscribe and leave me a like. You will really make my day. Very best regards and see you in the next video.